Hi everyone, my name is Terry. I want you to know that video editing takes a very long time. Um, like a really, really, really long time. This is like the sixth time I've tried to get this video correct. I think I'm going to end with this one, even if I really mess it up. So, um, I started this channel to kind of vent my feelings through crafting. Um, you're going to see some stuff, you know. I recorded from my uh, phone. I didn't have a camera. So I recorded everything from my phone, and while I was recording, I was talking. I was going to make this a therapeutic thing. And I decided after I watched them that when they made me cry over and over again that people don't want to watch a video and cry. So my goal would be for you to laugh. So if you notice the mistakes that I make, please laugh. Please laugh at me or laugh with me. Um, this is a way for me to get some of this stuff that I have stuffed down inside out. And it, even though you're not going to hear what I'm saying in the videos, you're going to see my hands moving while I'm talking with my hands, but even though you're not going to hear it, just know that it was very therapeutic for me. Um, I really hope you like the crafts. I hope you like my videos. Um, I am very amateur, 100%. This is really hard, but I want to do this. I want to stick to it, so please, if you like what I'm doing, please hit the subscribe button so you can see more, and even though I mispronounced subscribe, I hope you got the gist. Thank you for watching. Please come back. Okay, here we go, guys. First thing that we need to do is get some cut resistant gloves, some tin snips or wire cutters utility or an exacto knife, a lot of patience, super glue, either regular or gel. I use gel. Um, E6000. Um, hot glue is not your friend when it comes to aluminum. Um, you possibly some, or you need, um, the E6000 is really, really good. And possibly some wooden beads, depending upon how you, um, connect the center to the, uh, to the flower itself and then a plastic bag please when you cut cut over top of a plastic bag which you do not see me doing here because I didn't figure it out until I got the splinters all over the table so um, here use your um, snippers or your your wire cutters to um, cut through the top part of the can there and you'll be able to remove that circle right out from there it comes out fairly easy Please make sure you have gloves on. Don't even attempt to do this without gloves. Um, once you get that out, the aluminum tear is really easy. It's very thin. So you want to make sure that you are cutting as opposed to tearing. You will see me try to tear it. You'll see me try to do this is and that. And um, here I showed you that I did not clean that can out properly. I thought I did. I had two of them cleaned out, but evidently grabbed the wrong one. Don't use that knife I just showed you. It was my crocodile Dundee knife. Um, anyway, the exacto knife slides right through. Don't pull it towards yourself, towards your fingers, towards your hands. Um, straight down, straight towards the table, away from your body at all times. But the exacto knife did not do well when it came to cutting around at the can. It was kind of mangling it. So I ended up using the, just using the scissors, I believe. Here I try to rip it, but it starts to rip up into the part that you want to use. So let's try the exacto knife one more time. Here we go. These scissors, you guys, these are Westcott scissors. These are the best scissors I've ever had in my life. They have cut. They were my fabric shears, and I decided well, I'm going to use these, and then just buy a new pair of shears. Oh, what I'm doing here, I'm cutting the top of this, that that part up there. So the only way you can open it up is to get rid of that rim around the top of the part. That's the center of your sunflower. Do not throw those away. Um, so I, I took a petal off of a fake sunflower, 
and I glued it to a piece of cardboard and used it as a template. And here you see me looking for that. And as you can tell, this is a big mess. This tiny little room that I had. So I ended up using a piece that I had already made as a template. But anyways, just simple pencil, cut it, you know, um, draw around it, and then cut it out. But back to those scissors. I used these to cut metal. Um, I used them for cutting bamboo pieces, skewers, um, everything. I cut everything. Wood, popsicle sticks, wire. I've cut everything with these scissors. And I bought a new pair for my fabrics, which turned out to be crap. And I ended up taking those exact scissors in my hands right there back out to my sewing machine. And I am now using them to cut fabric again, if you can believe that. It is true. Anyway, I'm trying to, um, you need six petals per layer, and there's two layers per flower. So you will have 12 petals per flower. So here I'm just bending in the sharp edges. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm bending in the sharp edges to, um, for one thing, to have a, a nicer um, area to lay the petals on top of so that you don't, and, you know, of course not to, uh, I don't want to cut myself. So, um, yeah, this is a, it's actually a pretty easy craft. It just takes a lot of time. I forgot to say that you need the pencil and the needle nose pliers. But another thing that I want to mention here, when you get the petals done, when you'll see me laying them out on here, gluing them down to the center, you'll see them laying kind of bent backwards. I thought that after I got it done, I could bend the petals up, but it is not that easy. Every time now that I try to bend the petals, it, it'll pull them off. Um, possibly break the uh, aluminum, depending upon what you've done to it. So I suggest getting the petals shaped the way that you want to before you apply them to the center here. Um, I think that aluminum flowers are the best invention ever. I don't know who at one point said, hey, let's upcycle this pop can and do this. I had never seen this done um, as far as doing it. I've seen it. Um, at flea markets, I've seen people have made um, airplanes and cars and whatnot out of aluminum, but like aluminum squares and stuff put together. And I had seen, I think, just from a flower that I had seen at the um, Dollar Tree, and I thought, I wonder how they make these, and uh, thought I'd give it a try. So here it is. Once I started working with the aluminum. I realized how easy it was, how pliable it was. So, yeah, my super glue tip there uh, for some reason didn't stay on the, on the bottom. Sorry, my, my dog, Mr. Leo, is over here telling me he needs something. It must be pretty urgent. Okay, so if you haven't noticed, right, you'll see me put the um, glue and the E6000 onto the wrong side of the petals. I wanted the shiny side up, but you'll see me right there. Then I have to wipe it off and, and redo it. But you want to put it on the painted part of the, the uh, petals so that the shiny side is up. And then here I go with the second layer. You're just putting it right in between the others. But, you know, it, it probably doesn't matter which way you put them except that when you go to paint it's a little bit harder to paint over a black can okay so this cap that you see here is a beer cap i don't drink i've been clean since well new year's day of 2010 i drank new year's eve and it ran over midnight so you can decide but it's basically 11 years of not being drunk I do have a drink every now and then, and I'm lucky that I can do that, I guess. Um, a lot of people, once they give up alcohol, they can never touch it again, or else, and trust me, there's a big or else. And um, I 
feel pretty, you know, pretty good about the fact that I don't drink anymore. I'm not an active drunk anymore like I used to be. Um, so, you can see I'm talking here. I'm telling you something important, I'm sure. It was probably something very personal. Yeah, so talking with my hand, or I'm fidgeting around here. But anyway, so the center of your sunflower is black, brown, and a reddish tint. So I just started messing with these paints, trying to get the right combination. And here's where I'm getting the splinters in my fingers from not cutting into a, a plastic bag. Boom. Um, so I'll show you the uh, center here in a few of the fake sunflower, but what I did was I googled, I googled how to make a, or I, to make it, I googled pictures of sunflowers, I'm sorry, I knew I was going to do this, my dog's over here, um, telling me that he wants something and I have no idea what that could be, so I googled pictures of sunflowers and tried to uh, make mine, you know, pretty close you know, comparably. So you're going to see me dabbing on, at one point, you know, I'm putting actual drops on there. Um, I use brown, black, and, and the reddish brown. And then I decide, oh, I better mix it. This is kind of a long process here. Oh, I want to talk about those little containers there from Dollar Tree. Those are the best containers ever. I have blue jeepers paint in those that have been in there for months and they're still wet. I think I had one that, that had kind of dried out a little bit, but not really dry. It just kind of, you know, started to um, get a little thick. But they don't leak. I've had one that I had problems with and then I realized it had a crack in it. So I highly recommend those for a dollar. You can't beat it. I think there's like 12 of them in a pack. I got the uh, bigger ones. They're not quite. You can see it there in the in the uh, left hand upper or lower corner of the video. Um, that container there. Those work decent, but not as well as these little ones do. These little ones are just the bomb. But anyways, you can see me. I'm dabbing on the different colors, trying to get the perfect center here. And when I show it to you, you're going to see it's a little bit too too much black on it. Well, I fixed it, you know, after that. So, and then you're also going to see me get out my handy dandy hair dryer to dry the paint. I do not have a, a heat gun. I don't see the need to buy one. I don't use a hair dryer for anything other than crafting. And the funny story about my hair dryer that I'm going to use is it was, it belonged to my my youngest son, my youngest biological son's um, girlfriend, and she said that he used to use it. He she had to buy a new one because he would take that one, keep it by the bed, so that he could blow it down into the uh, blanket to keep his feet warm. Okay, so there's the center of the flower, and even there you can see how it kind of looks chunky. It looks like seeds in there, and that's the way a real sunflower looks. See, mine's a little bit too much uh, black there, but I'm kind of trying to make it look chunky by kind of dropping the paint and droplets. But anyways, yeah, she said that he would, his feet would be cold, so he'd open up the blanket and blow that air dryer, air dryer, down in there to keep his feet warm. So and that was Pumbaa. Pumbaa was such a character. Pumbaa passed away in 2019. Yeah. He had a lot of demons. He overdosed. He, and anybody who knows a, um, an active drug addict, you know that you don't lose your child all at once, even though, you know, death is so sudden. You feel them slipping away, and you see them slipping away, and sometimes you sit by, and you know you have to do something, but there's nothing you can do. Of course, I miss him terribly. We all do. He was so fun. So much fun.
try really hard not to cry, but it's really hard. And back in 2011, we lost his brother to a horrific car accident. Um, that was uh, so shocking. So um, sudden, just so tragic. So anyway, here I am. I'm probably telling you all about it here. But, you know, Rodney was 20 when he passed away. And Christian Pumba, at the time, he was uh, 17. He was about to turn 18. It was shortly before he turned 18. Um, and he uh, kind of got the short end of the stick. Rodney was his best friend. You know, they were so close. It was just ridiculous how close those two boys were. But, uh, yeah. So here's my handy dandy heat gun. But anyways, I don't want to be sad right now. I can't get through the video. But anyway. Yeah, this, the hair dryer works just fine. It's actually, um, we used heat guns. I worked in mold shops, fiberglass mold shops for years. And we used those heat guns, and they didn't have the, the blowing power that a hair dryer has, so it's actually better. So, so there it is. I think it looks really good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, well, I'm going to bend it out a little bit, but then I'm going to take a couple wooden beads, and I'm going to glue them inside. I have to repaint that after I chip that off of it, because I didn't think about that before. Like I said, this is just me. I, I've never seen anybody do this before. I just decided to do it. But um, I take a couple wooden beads and I actually use the hot glue and I glue those beads to the inside of that beer cap and later it falls off. Not on camera. It fell off on me. Um, and out there in that room, um, I, I was changing rooms at the time, so there's a big mess out there. And it fell off, and who knows where it landed. I haven't found it yet. It must have rolled up under my bookcase. But um, anyway, so I ended up having to redo the cap, you know, doing another cap. But the um, hot glue does not work on this at all. And I thought maybe because of the little plastic lining that's inside the beer cap, that that would help um, keep the, uh, you know, use for, the, for the glue to adhere to. But it didn't. It did not stay on either one. I did two flowers, and I ended up having to take them both. The one that fell off, and then the other one was real loose, so I ended up taking that one off too, and redoing them with the super glue E6000 and um, time, of course. Use super glue for the instant, and E6000 for the long haul, and they are very secure now. I can't wait to show you the second video on this of um, what I did to them, how I how I ended up putting them onto a board, and which I think is cute. Maybe you won't, but I do. But yeah, so I made two of these, and, and they turned out pretty darn cute. So anyway, um, of course, like I said, the super glue is for the uh, for the short term, so it won't pop out of there when you're working on it. And then I'm just gonna paint. Painting the cap was the hardest part. Oh, it didn't stay. See? Painting the cap was the hardest part. It took me forever. That tiny little cap. I just kept trying and trying and trying to get those colors right on that. And finally, I just kind of settled and I ended up working on it about two months later in this video. I did this video quite a while ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, my dog there. He won't, he won't stop bothering me. He's a good boy. I love that boy so much. He's a humongous boxer. He is a 110 pound boxer. Which, you know, boxers usually range, I think, from maybe 35 to 60, 80 pounds, something like that. He is a big one. We also have a white boxer, Ruby. That was Leo. We have a white boxer, Ruby, and she is. I think she's a pretty normal sized boxer. I think she weighs about 50, 55 to 60 pounds. And we had a fawn boxer. <clears throat> Sorry. 
We had a foreign boxer. Her name was Lucia. Oh, we miss her so much. She was such a character. Oh, she was such a character. But she was a small boxer. She was really tiny, so petite. And her, she had this really sh um, high-pitched bark when she barked. She was just a small girl. And when we got Ruby, the first time we heard Ruby bark, it about tore our skin off of our bodies. It was so different so shocking to hear that deep voice come out of that little dog but anyways then we have a border collie lab mix and her name is sadie and she's the old girl of the house she's the uh she's the matriarch i guess she took me over she's uh i believe i believe she's almost 13 years old She's, you know, she's having a hard time getting around now. We're going to miss her so much. I mean, you know, I had to face the fact when it happened to Lucy that, you know, they don't last forever, but all we can do is love them while, we're here, while they're here, you know, and they love us. They sure do. So, anyways, I told you painting this was, was about the toughest thing. And here I'm just trying to get a good yellow, trying to get a good yellow color, and then... When you look at pictures of real sunflowers, you'll see even around the bottom of the um, the petals, there's a little bit of red. It's a little bit of red. So I end up putting some red around the cap, the center, <clears throat> and then painting the yellow, you know, kind of streaking it around a little bit over time. That flower there doesn't show you the red around the petals, but if you look up the pictures, you'll see that there is quite a bit of red. So I'm trying to get it to be a golden, sunny color without being too yellow or too gold. Oh, there we go. I'm going to do my red base. I couldn't remember if I did the red base first or if I painted yellow and then, and then, uh, added the red to it. Yes, editing videos is pretty tough. I had a hard time. It took me two days of frustration and then I finished the video and I had it just the way I wanted it. It was so good. And um, when it went to export, I started the process to export it into the file. I guess that's what they call it. Export it from the video, from the um, editor to the, to the file it's going to be stored in. And I went upstairs to take the dogs out. And when I came back down, it was doing nothing. And I'm like, what happened to my video? I looked for it and it didn't, it wouldn't play. So I had to redo the whole thing. I was so frustrated. I almost started crying. I mean, I was telling my husband about it. I was choking up. And he's like, don't cry over that. But you don't realize, you know, how much, how much trouble this is. How much work that you have to put into this, you know. So it, it really was a heartbreaker. But the second time it did it, it uh, I found it. I found the, the video, it looked like it had done the same thing to me, but it didn't completely erase it or whatever it did the first time. So I got lucky that time, but what I did was I reduced the resolution, and I think it's because part of the, part of the videos were done with my camera, and I was trying to upload it or export it at a higher resolution which is the new video camera that I have. So it's a 1080, and I think I went down to, uh, is it 720 or 780, something like that, and then it exported, I mean, just like that. Yes, the pedal bending, oh, my phone kept shutting off, I apologize, it just kept, I'd be talking away and working away, and I'd look up and my video was not, not recording talk about frustrating but um so that's what I have so far and there we go there we go there we go so when I get this done it's I think it turns out really pretty I'm not trying to toot my own horn but 
it um I think it turns out really nice. I want to do some succulents next. Um, I think I'm going to start working on that maybe tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow I'm getting my COVID vaccine. I am nervous to say the least. I am very excited about getting it. I want to get it, but I'm very nervous about side effects and whatnot. But I guess if I'm if I get it and I have some weird complication and I pass away, they can learn something new for the next guy. So, you know, I'm not going to stop myself from getting it just because of a couple, you know, what ifs, what if, what if. I mean, if I get COVID, I have COPD so bad. It's, you know, it's not as bad. I, I say that because I'm the one suffering with it, but I know there are people that suffer worse COPD than I do. And I don't want to get to that point, but I already know that if I get it, I'm probably going to pass away. So I'm trying not to um, have that horrible, you know, horrible suffering death that so many people, I feel so terrible for all the families that have lost people to COVID. And I feel sorry for the people who have had to die alone during this pandemic. This has been just a horrible thing. You know, she's going to look really good when she's done. But I really appreciate you all watching. I um, I hope that I get better and I get a little bit more comfortable behind the microphone here and in front of the camera. Um, but please, if you like it, you can share it maybe. Um, help me out. No. <laughs> I'm not begging. I'm really not. I hope people like my videos. I really do. It's one of those things, you know, I have low self-esteem. So, when it comes to things like this, I think, oh, people are going to hate it. Nobody's going to like it. They're going to, people are going to click dislike. They're going to be on here critiquing me to death and I'm going to want to quit. But I hope that's not the case. But if it does happen, it does happen. So anyways, yeah, you see how I'm streaking the colors around? The very, after the paint dries, and then I paint some more yellow over top, it starts to really look good. So, um, but thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time.